Dave here, how are you? I thought you might be interested to see the latest connectors that Festool have bought out for their DF500, that's the 500 Domino. They've had a similar connector out for the 700 for quite a while, but people have been crying out for one for the 500 because the 500 is such a popular machine. These are a clamp that pulls the joint together. So you will use a Domino as well in the joint, but I've got, got this one here just to show you how it works. We have in here is an expanding clamp. So it, as you tighten this unit into it, it opens up inside the timber and grabs a hold. Yep, like that. Slide it together. There's a receiver that I've put in here and it's very easy to do that. I'll show you how all that's done. Pull it together, a few turns on the grub screw and it's done. <laughs> that's it. I can build something in the workshop here lock it together with these instead of screws and glue. I can disassemble it, flat pack it, take it to where it's got to go and then reassemble it very quickly without glue or without Those screws. Those five parts just there make up the corner connector. This goes into one side and you'll notice there's a nut in here and as I put the bolt in it will pull down, force these legs out into the timber, these spurs, and they'll grab a hold of the timber. And the nut is a wedge that does all that for me. In the other side, we have a zinc, it appears to be a zinc uh, nut, and it has a plastic stabilizer that I put around the zinc nut, which holds the zinc nut in position, stops it rotating in the hole, and then a grub screw. And there's an Allen key as well. So that goes down into there, and it in turn locks onto there. And that's, that's all there is to it inside there. Now, how we get them into the timber is very easy. We use the domino, and we use an eight millimeter cutter for the domino. I'm gonna undo this. And what's the name of this one? In German, it's the Eckverbinder. Now, German people are probably going to start rolling around on the floor at my pronunciation, but basically it means corner connector. We have another part that is pretty important to have, and this is the Borscherblön, <laughs> which is drilling template. That's all that means. It is a guide that drops into an eight millimeter domino hole, and it has a variable base plate. So this allows us to work from 18 to 28 millimeters in thickness of material. It has a guide down the center which takes the 15 millimeter drill and it makes it stop on that bronze bush there. And you can see it's just coming through on the other side. Works well. Dust port, of course. Being first of all, there's a dust port on there as well. So let's get into it. Oh, one of the other things with the domino and with the drill guide, turn the dust extractor down to as slow as it'll go. You don't need it pulling like it would with a capex. Now, how do we set it all up? You'll see here, I've written P, P, 15, and a line. Now they line up like so. When I'm doing a domino join, I get a pencil and I just make a mark across the join and that does me. I could, then I put a P, 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 and P. Now what that stands for is pin. So on the domino, you'll see these are the pins. They're not actually pins anymore, they're wedges. But they hold the domino in position for me to be able to do a plunge, a set distance. So it's referencing, I'm not drilling, it's 38 millimeters from the side of that to the center of the cutter. All right, oh, the other thing is, I always put this on whenever I can on the domino. It stops the machine rocking around. Also, I've got it all set to tight. I will be going 15 or 28 millimeters, depending on which part of the timber I'm going into. And I've got it set at 10 millimeters deep at present, which on this one is showing 20, which shows the thickness of the timber. Now I could make this more if I want, but I find working from the outside if I stick to 10, it's going to be great. 
there are plugs you can put over those if you want to put the joint on the inside you can do that but there's a little bit of mathematics involved with that so i find it easier to put it on the outside okay so now the next thing to do is now that i've got that there to save any confusion i open it up and i've actually put a little elliptical shape there and there so i know where that plunge has got to go in i've got to go in that way there and on this one i've got to go in that way with all the writing that i've done has got to be facing up towards me so i'll be putting it there to do those and on this one i want to go there so i'll pull my supports out a little bit there i'll be sitting it there and doing a plunge 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 working off the sides but these ones i need to go in 15 millimeters deep and i'm going to go a minimum of 10 in the depth automatic dust it's down to slowest she's on i continue from the side there you go now that was 15 remember and i said 15 here so i'm going to work off the center of this one now that's pretty good and See how the plate there is helping keep it bearing properly? So we go in the centre. And I'm going to work off the end. Bring it back to the knuckle. And in. So now I have my three domino holes. And now I'm going to do these ones. Now these ones have got to be, I wrote on there 28. It's not very bright, but it does say 28 millimeters. So now I set the domino by pushing down here, push that forwards and all the way down till it comes back into the 28. I always like to turn the domino on before I go in there. Up to it. And then the center. off the edge okay so these are all at 28 deep they're going to line up like that first thing I need to do is put these in I'll put one there I'll get another one handy kit isn't it Another one there. Beautiful. And I can now put that in there, tighten her up. Hope you can see what's happening there. And as I tighten it up, it's expanding. Done. And I want it to be set to the outside. I want that flat. That that area there facing the outside of the joint because that's the side I'm working from and then down and it will expand I'll put a domino in there as well I have to drill down in there and there off the face remember the face that I'm working from so I can move this up and down until it slides in when it's in there, I tighten that knob there. And then it's an idea to put a clamp on this. There's a recess there for the clamp to go on. That's got him. And then we can slip this on. And then I've got the drill bit. It's a Centratech fitting. And it's got a bronze bush there that bumps against that. And it's a 15 millimeter diameter drill. I'll go to manual. Got it. Drill the hole. That is going to go on to 
there and into there like so. So that's my joint open at the moment. We put the nut in. I think this is a zinc nut. We put it in with the hole. It's, it's symmetrical, so it makes no difference. You've got a little bit of a slot there if you need to put a big screwdriver in to adjust it when you put it in the hole, but I don't think you'll need to. So we just drop it in. And then this plastic guy at the front here goes in. There she goes. Done. That's one. Drop it in. Now you'll see if you get it wrong, you can take them out. Just there is a little opening. So you can push this into the timber and around and lever it back out if you want to. Then you get hold of it with pliers and pull it out. That's just in case you stuff something up. Pull it back in. Done. Now, we put, put it together. Like so. So put the grub screw on the driver. And the other one, I haven't pulled it together yet. Haven't really given it any pressure. But you can watch it pull together. See that? And the other side. That, my friend, is a fantastic joint. Down the inside, beautiful. Joints fine across the end. Fine across the end, beautiful there. Now we can put a cap on there if we want to. It's up to you. They've got little slots on the side that are designed to go down either side if they're proud. That's it, that's what they look like. I'd probably be putting the joint away where you don't see it. But how quick and easy is that? That's beautiful. And then when you can take it apart, as it's so easy to take it apart. Let's undo that. Take the grub screw out. Grub screw out. Lovely. Now we don't have to stop there by just using those zinc jaws that lock into the timber. You can use shelf pin holes that have been created either via an LR32 system or whatever system you have available. So there is a exact same receiver. It's got a very coarse thread and I'll throw a picture up. Very coarse thread with that dish there again. So as the grub screw comes down, it slides down into that, uh, into that dish and pulls back like a wedge and makes the joint very tight. And it doesn't stop there. So the other, one of the other options is the MSV. Now it is using the center, one gable in the center of a cabinet, and then having, utilizing that center instead of having two side by side. And I can show you there on my cabinets. Have one in the center and then you can join from either side, like so on that side as well. Pull them together and that will lock it. Now, how you hold it together there, there's an adjustable pair of guys. It's a male and a female, and it's these two here. So this is the female and that's the male. You lock them together and that's about, two, you get enough grip at 28 millimeters, and then this will screw down to 18. Okay, and that, I'll do a picture of that one as well. And that's the width or the size of an eight millimeter domino. So you would need, again, domino holes, a couple of dominoes, and either side, you'd put the joiner in. That's that. Now, if you have shelf pin holes that are going all the way through now, if they've been done by the LR32 system or by another system with a drill, that's fine. They have a situation like this. And I will take a photo of this. Now, this one, is basically a male and female thread that goes through the five millimeter hole, one into the other, and it tightens up again to a minimum thickness of 18 This is millimeters. a little bit of an addendum to the video I've just produced. I did all the video here yesterday and I slept on it overnight and there was some things popping into my head as they do. Now I'm sure you 
have a similar situation where you do something and you think about it overnight and think, ah, oh, I forgot that bit or I need, this makes sense. So what I've done, yesterday I showed you how to do this joint and it works very, very well. It goes together beautifully. So that's the joint there that I showed you yesterday. Now on that one, this particular timber is 24 millimeters wide. Now at normal practice, to make a good mortise and tenon joint, because basically that's all this is, is a mortise and tenon. It's a, it's a slip tenon into a mortise that the domino creates, is to center it. So, and also a good rule of thumb is one third. So this being 24 millimeters, eight millimeters is perfect. So eight millimeters ch uh, shoulder, eight millimeter shoulder, eight millimeter tenon, makes 24 millimeters. Now, I thought about it last night and also yesterday I was saying to if I'm working on to the outside a minimum of 10 millimeters and I started to get caught up with that minimum 10 millimeters and thinking well that's the only size you can do wrong so this morning I put a mortise in with the Domino 500 centered after I thought about it overnight I would show how this can work a couple of other ways we can center that at, at 12 millimeters and it will be fine this one is set down 10 millimeters from the face and you can drill the hole from the inside without any mathematics because that guide that drilling template self corrects for you it works off the base plate and I show you in this video from my headset how it works so that either side of that nut I'm going to show this camera over here has bearing on the side, of course in the center here, that's the thickness of the domino. Understand? So it needs to have bearing either side to give equal pressure on the joint. So it's pulling the joint equally from either side. If I go to 16 millimeters, there is the risk of the drill punching through the other side, through the back because it's wanting to get a, a minimum depth for the shoulders on that nut to actually get a purchase. Middle side connector is what the MSV stands for. It's pulling together inside the joint here. I'm going to do it down there. So it's going to pull together inside that joint. The shoulders have thickness, and I go through that, I'll show you. The board is 18.45 millimeters. On the joint, 19.5. The shoulders got a half a millimeter thick, just over a half a millimeter thick, which is going to give you an open joint, unless you do what I did, and that was to get a clamp, and clamp the thing, pull it tight, and then, nipped it up with these and you can do it that way. So in the set, you get, you get the drill, the 15 mil drill, you get the uh, drilling template, you get all the, the things that hold the nuts in position, you get all the nuts, you get dominoes, you get the expanding jaws, you get covers, um, you get the grub screws. Thanks for watching. Keep on coming back, click the like, subscribe and share the video. Thanks for watching again, and I shall see you next time. Bye. Nice, nice, I like it.